and welcome back to You Reach on 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student at the University of Virginia as part of a, or a Bachelor of Computer Science. And today we're going to be talking about the third part of a kind of three-part sub-series within this series about induction and deductive arguments uh, and reasoning in general. And the kind of three different ways of uh, reasoning out of the kind of four I've listed, induction, deduction, mathematical induction, and abduction. Again, we're not going to be talking about abduction, but just to kind of clue you in that there are these different ways of reasoning that you do reason, uh, or that you could reason, or come to conclusions. Uh, and as discussed in the previous two videos, uh, which you could probably go watch if you haven't seen yet, uh, on we've discussed induction and how inductive uh, reasoning and arguments work. We've discussed mathematical induction and how that works. And today we're going to be talking about deduction and kind of how it relates to all this. And so what is deduction? Uh, you've probably heard of it uh, from Sherlock Holmes. He, he likes to talk a lot about de deduction and deducing things. Uh, and this is indeed part of what he does. Uh, Sherlock Holmes doesn't always use deduction when making conclusions, but he often enough does that it's kind of associated with him in the pop culture view of what deduction actually is. So what is deduction? Quote, a process of reasoning in which a conclusion follows necessarily from the premises presented so that the conclusion cannot be false if the premises are true. So let's draw that out. So we have two premises. These are things that can be either true or false. And then a conclusion. And the conclusion, if the two premises are true, the conclusion has to be true. It is as strong of a kind of connection as you can get. Uh, so, for example, uh, if this is it is raining, it is cloudy. Premise number two is, it is raining, therefore it is cloudy. So that you, at least in the context of this argument, uh, kind of assume that there are going to be clouds, or at least something you know, definable as cloudy, uh, if it is raining. Uh, and in fact, in this case, that is a valid thing to consider. Uh, now, in practice, there are going to be some days where it's kind of sunshiny and then there's still rain, uh, but again, uh, in the context of this particular argument, uh, it is necessarily true that it is cloudy if it is raining. So we could also kind of view it as a reasoning from the general to the specific, uh, in which conclusion falls necessarily from the premises, so that you can have some general set, uh, that it is this general thing where if it is raining, then it is cloudy, uh, and a specific uh, it is cloudy, conclusion made from it. Uh, and if you can view induction as kind of the opposite direction, where you start with some specific knowledge, and then you generalize from it, and then you hope that in that case that you're generalizing properly. If you're going from the general to the specific, usually you can do so without having to worry about error. Although if you go back to the video on the ecological fallacy, this isn't always ne necessarily true, uh, but it is usually. So in general, you start with facts, and you kind of deduce other facts from the facts that you have. You know that your conclusion must follow 100% if you start with facts, and if you reason from truth, uh, or if you reason from truth, uh, and have your facts right to start with. This is opposed to inductive reasoning, where if you have true uh, facts and, and a valid argument in inductive reasoning, your conclusion isn't necessarily going to same thing with abductive reasoning, but we're not going to cover that. Uh, another thing that is probably worth pointing out is that the terms that you use in your arguments should be clear in inductive or in deductive reasoning, uh, and that if you have clear terms, uh, a, a deductive argument is more likely to be valid and come to a con true conclusion based on true premises. And of course, as we've discussed in previous videos, 
what we mean by term. argument some x are y, all y are z, therefore some x are z, the terms in this context are x, y, and z. So if we mean by x the same thing every time we use x, again going to the equi equivocation video if you want examples otherwise, uh, then our terms are clear. We are not equivocating. Uh, and so if you have clear terms, and with those clear terms, your premises are true, and your connection between your premises are valid, so they're not subject to any of the many logical fallacies we've talked about, then the conclusion is necessarily true if it is a deductive argument. Typically, you, in order to come up with things in a deductive way, you are merely just uh, using relationships between the syntax of what you're expressing, or perhaps relationships between, uh, I guess, logical laws uh, or uh, things that are tautologies or, or things that are always going to be true. Uh, and you can manipulate, for example, where we've got this general s statement here that all Y or Z, again, in order to come to a particular conclusion from it. So you're going from the general to the specific. What makes deduction valid? Uh, the rule and what makes the, the rules of logic and the rules that you would bring in in a deductive argument uh, valid. And the, that they work in deductive reasoning is what makes them valid. Yes, this is circular, uh, and see the circular reasoning and recursion video for more discussion on things that are circular. But there's a lot of circularity involved in deductive reasoning, uh, and that you can kind of very quickly see the same thing from multiple different angles. Uh, in a, a way that is logically valid to kind of change between them. It's related to other videos that we've done, as kind of discussed a little bit here. Uh, it's related to the epistemology and AI video, because there's no epistemic uncertainty involved in deductive reasoning, meaning that if you have uh, a high degree of certainty uh, of your knowledge of the two premises, then your certainty in the conclusion must be equally high or higher or specifically, if you have absolute certainty in your two premises, then your conclusion also must be 100% certain as well. Not 99% certain, but 100. I.e., you must never increase the amount of semantic information or certainty above what is already stated in the premises. Your conclusion only states something that's inherent in the premises, even if it isn't stated. As pointed out in the induction video, not everyone agrees that deduction is a valid form of inference either. There are some people who are absolute purists and only hold that you can believe things that are directly from their chosen source of facts, or possibly their own sensory organs, and that everything in those two, uh, or, or, or whatever their, their gold standard of information is, that only those things are true, that everything else is potentially flawed, that there is no deductive way to conclude things in a valid way where the, certain, or the conclusion is always certain uh, based on true premises. Uh, examples of this are the people who only believe things from the, or from the Christian Bible or only from the, the Islamic Quran. Uh, and these are kind of examples of people where if you did come up with a uh, deductive argument of something that they, they did not agree with, they probably wouldn't believe you. Uh, and this can get pretty extreme. Uh, in the history of mathematics, uh, the Pythagoreans uh, found a guy who, uh, I think it was even a Pythagorean up until that point, uh, who discovered the proof of the irrationality of the square root of 2. So that this number is not a rational number. He came up with that proof. It was a deductive proof. Uh, so its conclusion was necessarily true based on its premises. And its premises, everyone agreed, were true. So instead of accepting his argument and accepting the conclusion in his argument, they threw him off a boat in the middle of the sea and had him drowned. 
So they killed him for trying to make a deductive argument. And unfortunately, he's far from the only person killed uh, for making deductive arguments that just happen to be true or have true conclusions. Uh, and so, again, not everyone's going to accept these kinds of arguments, but generally people will, uh, or at least reasonable people will. Uh, and you should probably uh, at least consider the situation that you're in, uh, and uh, in many cases accept them. What are some example deductive arguments? Back to the universal quantifier video for that symbol. All men are mortal. Socrates is a man. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. Uh, this is a deductive argument. It relates Socrates as a position in this set, this general uh, collection of things called men. All of the men have the property that they are mortal. Socrates is a part of that group. Uh, Socrates, therefore, is mortal. This is a relationship between uh, Socrates and being a man, and, and being a man and being mortal. Uh, it is a valid conclusion that you can draw. If both of these two premises are true, then this conclusion has to be true. And in fact, Socrates, Socrates was a man. Uh, he was also mortal because he died, as we'll discuss li later. If some angle, A or alpha, uh, is between 90 and 180 degrees, then A is obtuse. This is just what obtuse means. You'll find this a lot in deductive arguments where the, the general statement is just relating things that are definitions. Then, this angle specifically is 120 degrees. Therefore, angle alpha is obtuse relates this particular kind of angle to this kind of angles, i.e. obtuse ones, and we come to the conclusion that it is, in fact, obtuse. Again, this is a conclusion that is valid to draw from the definition of the word obtuse, which can be expressed as this general relationship between angles and whether or not something is, or an angle is obtuse. Uh, it is dangerous to argue purely based on definitions when you're dealing with complicated matters. And we'll get into maybe the reason why in another series, uh, but it is worth pointing that out, that sometimes you want to be careful when doing that. But again, you're going to have to, on some level, know what terms mean and deal with terms in a way that is consistent with their meaning. In this particular case, this angle is, in fact, obtuse, and it is valid to claim that it is obtuse if these two premises are true. So in general, you have to be more careful with deductive arguments, because of the level of certainty involved with conclusion, you have to be careful that you're not making a logic mistake and kind of committing any of the logical fallacies discussed before or any others that I haven't mentioned uh, in your argument. Again, you have to be sure that your terms are clear, that you're not committing an equivocation, that there is the relationship that you describe in your particular argument. Uh, another example. am a man. Je I, Jeff Cliff, am a man. It is true. Men don't get pregnant. At least yet, there is no way for a man to become with child. Sucks to be man. Therefore, I am not pregnant. 
given that these two premises are true, this conclusion follows from them. It is a logical necessity based on these two premises. So this is, in fact, a deductive argument. So what are some examples of situations where you would not want to use deductive reasoning? Uh, well, the first is in situations where you don't have enough data or don't have a high enough quality of data to make a deductive conclusion. If you're trying to predict the population of the city that you're currently living in, you're not going to be able to predict it with 100% validity. No matter, I mean, especially if you go anywhere be beyond a, you know, a couple nanoseconds in the future. Uh, you know, yes, it takes some time for people to move in and out of the city, but kind of the greater time that is, the more uncertainty is involved. Uh, yes, you can account for some degree of uncertainty. You can do so in a, a, a way that is very valid when dealing with inductive arguments. But again, you're not going to be able to use deductive arguments for predicting the actions of human beings on a high enough level over a long enough time frame, at least uh, in terms of things like what human being is living in what city. Uh, and so you can also run into problems when dealing with things that aren't human beings. Like for example, paths that objects take in, in the universe, or uh, temperatures that a particular chemical reaction will have. Uh, you, you can know to a very high degree of accuracy these things, but you will never know with 100% certainty uh, exactly the outcome of your experiment or possible experiments that you can do. Another example where you probably don't want to use deductive reasoning is if you're walking alone in the dark in the middle of a forest and you hear something growling. You could conclude uh, that it is either a lion, a tiger, a bear, a Godzilla, uh, or a good deal many things. And you could kind of sit in the middle of the forest and reason about what exactly is being kind of growling at you in the dark. Uh, or you could just run and not think about it all that much. Chances are if you just run or you know, start, you start sharpening a pointy stick or something, you'll have a much better likelihood of survival than merely sitting around and thinking about it. And there's going to be a lot of situations where, although it is logically possible that you may even be able to deduce uh, the correct answer deductively, in practice, your survival depends on your not doing so. And so you want to use a quicker method or a method that generates a result that is good enough for the moment. Uh, and use induc induction or something like it uh, instead of deduction in those cases. And this even extends to things like the ticking time bomb situation, where you have no uh, kind of time to reason using any method. You just have to act immediately. Uh, this is related to other videos, as kind of mentioned. Uh, it's related to Descartes. Uh, Descartes was attempting to make an entire system of reasoning based on deductive principles. And he was kind of trying to make uh, a situation where he could always be certain of the things that he believed. Uh, this is going to be something that is only possible to do so much with. Uh, so when we get to the pragmatism video, uh, they're going to admit that some things are not available to, to you by deduction alone. They're more interested in doing those things than being absolutely certain of the things that they believe. It's related to the forest versus trees video. Uh, because you'll find that deductive arguments are handy when dealing ex with extremely low-level activity. So flipping bits in a certain order, or kind of governing the behavior of uh, dynamic systems. These are things that you may be able to do some work deductively. Uh, the same thing on the very high level, when dealing with how systems interconnect with each other. But in the middle level, between these two extremes, you'll find that induction tends to give you a lot more value, a lot more bang for the buck than deductive arguments will. Of course, if you can use deduction, you can go for it, but just know that it's not always going to be the best tool for the job. It's related to dimensional analysis in that video, because dimensional analysis is best dealt with on the deductive level, uh, in where your conclusion about whether both sides of your equation or whatever it is you're dealing with are of the same dimension, you know, it has to be true or false. Uh, I, I'd imagine it's possible that you could do that in, in an inductive way, but it would be weird, and I'm not even sure how that would work, to be honest. It's related to the optimization problems we do, because optimization, pro optimization problems are usually ideally deductive. Uh, as mentioned in the inductive videos, if it is ever the case that you can't prove deductively an optimal result, sometimes you can get away with you know, having a just good enough result inductively, 
But if you want to have the best answer to a situation, you're probably going to have to prove it conductively. No, sorry, prove it deductively. It's related to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 video, because you probably want mathematical inductive arguments rather than deductive arguments for pattern recognition and for dealing with patterns. So this is a situation where you probably want to avoid deductive reasoning. It's related to the analogy video, because you can actually make analogies deductive. You have to be really careful when you do so. Uh, but if you use the right relationships, you can actually get away with it. Uh, most of the time, however, reasoning by analogy is reasoning uh, using either inductive or mathematical inductive methods. Uh, can you use the result of your deductive argument? Uh, can you use the result of your deductive argument with induction? Can you use your result of your deductive argument with mathematical induction? These are questions you could probably ask. Uh, Paulia pointed out that math used to be a lot more deductive in the past than it is even in his day, or than it was in his day. Uh, a lot of especially older math had a deductive character. Euclid was deductive. It was all deductive. Uh, newer math, including computer science, tend to involve a lot of assumptions and a lot of kind of leaping towards conclusions uh, and then kind of reasoning from there uh, that make it look a lot more inductive in character. However, both deduction and induction are involved in science more generally and go back to the very early attempts at codifying how thinking works, how reasoning might best be done with the ancient Greeks, including Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, and possibly earlier. It's also worth a kind of a side note pointing out that uh, Alfred North Whitehead and Bert Bertrand Russell uh, tried to rewrite the entirety of mathematics in their day, the beginning of the 20th century, from the perspective of deductive arguments. They did not succeed. Their goal turned out to be kind of impossible. Uh, but it's worth pointing out that they tried to do this, and that their attempt at doing so ended up leading to a lot of insightful things uh, that they were able to uh, draw from that. So it wasn't a futile thing that they were doing, trying to build math entirely with deduction. But again, they, they did run into problems at, at some point. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience today? As usual, if there are any questions you'd like to know about deduction, uh, feel free to ask them anywhere where this video is posted. Uh, as usual, there should be a Bitcoin donation address. Uh, the Bitcoin network operates on uh, deductive principles, as far as I'm aware of. Uh, and uh, as usual, hopefully you enjoy. See you next video.